Hey there guys, so this is totally not the video that I thought I was uploading tonight. Um, I had something else in the can that probably will come out next week instead, but uh, essentially I had a really interesting breakthrough on thinking about atomics yesterday, and uh, it led to what I thought was a pretty spiffy chart that I threw on uh, the TechPoy group, and summarily got a whole shit ton of questions about. So this is my attempt to answer those questions in video form. Um, Essentially what we're talking about is the arrangement of atomic planes in relation to each other. And even more specifically, um, this harkens back to a lot of the ideas that uh, I got from Arashi at Burning Man about how uh, atomics can work. Uh, it might help to brush up on these ideas, so I'm going to go ahead and link to the video that I did about Arashi's concept of uh, atomics right here, especially because I'm going to be referencing the ideas a lot, and more specifically, I'm going to be borrowing his vocabulary. Here's my disclaimer. I do not necessarily think my use of the vocabulary is exactly the same as his. So I am just taking terms that I think might overlap and appropriating them, because of course that never leads to confusion, right? Okay, so here's the Cliff's Notes on how, on how this works. Um, we're used to thinking of timing and direction in three dimensions as being a function of points of divergence and points of being angled. So for example, I'm performing what would be considered a split L right now in that my hands are switching between a place where they're as far away from each other as they can get and when they're at a right angle to each other. As far away from each other as they can get at a right angle to each other, right? Um, but there's another way to think about them, and that is um, if you take the arc that the poi is traveling around and you draw a line, dividing it in half along an axis, and it doesn't matter what the axis is. It could be a vertical axis, it could be a horizontal axis, it could be a diagonal axis, who knows. Um, the point is, is that when you draw that line, all of a sudden, the path of the poi gets divided into halves where the poi is going one direction on one side and it's going the other direction on the other side, right? Uh, now this becomes very, very important if, say, you start tilting the poi plane in a particular way. When you start tilting the poi plane in a particular way, you've really drawn the axis for yourself. So if, say, I'm tilting it towards the camera, I've drawn an axis that goes through it horizontally, and there's now a side where it looks like it's going clockwise, and, well, it looks like it's going clockwise no matter what, but there's a side that looks like it's going to my right, and a side that looks like it's going to my left. Likewise, if I rotate it around in a vertical fashion, I've created an axis that passes through it vertically, and there's now a side where it's going up, side where it's going down, so on and so forth. You get the drift, right? Okay, so in most cases we don't need to worry about this because we perform moves with poi that are in parallel planes. Now, parallel planes come in a couple different flavors. One where they're flat up against us, which we would usually call wall plane, and one where they're straight out on the sides of us called wheel plane, right? And in either one of these arrangements, uh, we're basically talking about having the planes be such that the poi can never, ever interact with each other, right? If, on the other hand, we angle those planes even slightly, and by slightly, I mean any arrangement other than this, and this, so all of these different angles suddenly come into place. Why do they come into place? Well, because the upside and the downside, or the forward side and the back side, whichever uh, axis you happen to draw through the path of the poi, suddenly has an impact on the path of the other poi. <clears throat> so, for example, you could think of the uh, arc of the poi having an up shadow and a down shadow and the placement of the other poi in these two shadows has a lot to do with how they can move in relation to each other. So, for example, if I take a move that most of us are very, very familiar with from when we first started learning poi called the butterfly, a butterfly is a great example of one of these atomics because we are now overlapping the poi at a point that is just in front of the hands, right? But it just so happens to be that it is in the down shadow of each of these poi's arcs. My left hand is in the right hand's down shadow. My right hand is in the left hand's down shadow, right? And the cool thing about this is if I'm doing it from a together time kind of phasing, it's impossible for these poi to tangle. If I reverse the direction of one poi, now I'm contrasting two shadows. Now my left hand is over in my right hand's up shadow, and my right hand is in my left hand's down shadow. Yes? 
and this is an arrangement that Arashi would refer to as crane. Once again, it's impossible to tangle in here. Now, if I shift my timing, excuse me, such that I, we would usually call this like a, uh, a split opposites or a split time butterfly. Now, the two poi are overlapping in each other's down shadows once again. Once again, that point of overlap is just a few inches in front of my hands. You can see it like this. We could place that point of overlap further away or we can move it closer to the hands. It really doesn't matter. What does matter is that in this arrangement, it, uh, the two poi are shifting to opposite shadows in relation to each other constantly. So it means that they're never actually in each other's shadows. If, on the other hand, I reverse the direction of one of the poi, now they can be in each other's shadows at the same time. And here's the important part. Whenever they are in each other's shadows, they tangle. So, to go through each of these, in a together time kind of arrangement, we have a butterfly when they're both in each other's down shadows. When an up shadow is contrasted against a down shadow in a together time kind of arrangement, it's a crane. When you have two down shadows and they're going in a split time kind of relationship, you have what I call an atom. And when you're contrasting an up shadow versus a down shadow, in a split time kind of arrangement, you have a tangle. And I would actually venture to say this is all tangles and all inversions. Let me show you what I mean right here. But first, um, one thing to also note is that every 90 degrees you turn with these atomics, oops, means that you're shifting the shadows such that if you turn 90 degrees from a crane, you're in a butterfly. And if you turn 90 degrees from a butterfly, you're in a crane, right? Okay, so um, let's say for the sake of argument that I am performing what we would normally see as a split opposites kind of move right here, yes? When I turn to the side, I've got a couple different options of how I'm going to turn this into an atomic arrangement. I could rotate them each around a vertical axis, in which case the down shadows are now overlapping and I'm creating a relationship wherein they're never in the same shadow at the same time, and we would recognize this as being an atom relationship. If, on the other hand, what if I were to switch them both along a horizontal axis? Now, you'll note that the two poi are in each other's, uh, I guess you would say, shadow going to the right at the same time. They're overlapping in front of my hands right here. So now they're no longer in an atom relationship. They are in a butterfly relationship, right? It just so happens, though, that because we've angled the, uh, the, the planes such that they look kind of like a box on its side now, you can have a relationship where they're creating an, a butterfly atom, but they appear to be in a split opposites kind of arrangement. In other words, this is not a replacement for traditional ideas of timing and direction. It is a way of augmenting it and describing how it can be done uh, with planes that are overlapping each other, right? So by the same token, let's say that we took what we would normally see as a together opposites kind of arrangement, and I'm going to alter it just slightly so I can get a tangle out of it. And I'm doing an inversion here because I just quite frankly suck at, uh, at tangles, but the, the movement is essentially the same, right? Now, in order to make that work, what's happening is that rather than working in parallel planes, I'm actually tilting the angle of the one in my right hand right here. And it doesn't look like there's much of a difference when viewed from head on. It still looks like it's opposite same time. But from the side, I've now created a, a relationship wherein they, the two uh, poi planes can collide with each other. Why? And now we must untangle. Brilliant. Um, so I have rotated my right hand according to a horizontal axis. And for having done that now, there's now a shadow that is going to my left and a shadow that's going to my right. And now the shadow that's going to my left can overlap with the shadow of the poi in my left hand as it's going to the right. 
In other words, it's the same kind of relationship as if I were to overlap an up shadow and a down shadow, right? Um, yeah, so I think this idea is really cool. I think it holds water. Uh, throw me some comments. I'll go ahead and link to the diagram in uh, the description section of the video. Um, once again, I do not know if this is the same way that Arashi processes uh, atomics. I'm borrowing the terms because they're convenient. Uh, Arashi, if I am totally out of left field on this, please let me know. And to the rest of you who play around with atomics and tangles, please consume this. Send me feedback. Uh, anyway, thanks for watching, guys, and have yourselves a good day. Peace.